the role of the diaspora in the development of the Caribbean. Should students return home after graduation or should they contribute from outside? That's our topic up next on Carib Nation. Hello, welcome to Carib Nation. I'm Doris Dean. The role of the diaspora has become increasingly important to the Caribbean in recent years. Governments are trying to harness the skills of their personnel outside. We're going to talk today with uh, an ambassador and some students who are thinking about returning home or not. And we'll get their views on how important it is to make your contribution to the development of your country. Welcome to Carib Nation, Ambassador Johnny. Thanks, ambassador well. Sonia Johnny, the ambassador of St. Lucia to the United States and the permanent representative to the Organization of American States. And we have Deshauna Bernard, who is a graduate of American University, and we'll get her views on whether she wants to return home or not. And we have Theon O'Connor, who's a Jamaican, and he's a, at Georgetown University in PR and Communications. Welcome to all of you, and thanks for joining us in Carib Nation. Thanks for having me. And as I said, the role of the diaspora has become increasingly important in the Caribbean. We have a few countries that have um, set aside programs to work with the diaspora. And I'll start with uh, Ambassador. As a representative of your government, what role do you think the diaspora can play in helping with development in your country when you consider some of the lacks that we have in the, in the region? The diaspora can play a very important role in the development of my country. Um, but some people believe that they must be in the country to play a significant role, and that is not quite true. For St. Lucia, we have um, tr tried a two-fold approach mm -hmm. to working with the diaspora, uh, to accepting the whole idea of people migrating to developed countries. What we have done, first, for the, uh, at a student level, we have decided that you must be able, when you come back to make a contribution to the country, you have to be able to fit into the mm -hmm. development and scheme of, of the country, development scheme or vision of the country. And so we've made provisions for you to find out how best you can, you, you can do this. As far as the diaspora is concerned, St. Lucia has actually, in fact, most of the Caribbean countries, we have a diaspora desk and, a, and an ambassador mm -hmm. um, who is assigned to deal directly with members of the diaspora. And this ambassador is usually um, uh, has, a of, has an office in the prime minister's office to show the importance nice. of the diaspora to many of the Caribbean countries. And what he or she is delegated to do is to reach out to members of the diaspora and tell them exactly where we need assistance, how they can, what ventures are available, and they can so that we promote joint ventures that, um, with the members of the diaspora and to have them use their skills and assets, even though they're not in the country. Mm. Encourage them to give back the country by, being, by using what they can from where they are, mm -hmm. using these resources to help and develop the, the country. I'd basically. like to come back and talk some more about that mechanism uh, and, and exactly how it works. But before we get to that, I'd like to talk to you, Deshaun. Deshauna, um, having graduated, yeah. What was your first thought, or did you come with a, a, a plan as to whether you will stay in the United States or go back home and, and make a contribution? Um, well, thank you again for having me. It's great to be back on Carib Nation. Um, when I migrated to the United States, I always had a plan to return. Um, upon graduation, the plan was still the same. Uh, 
when I graduated, I always wanted to experience a foreign service in Trinidad and Tobago, graduating with political science, focusing in comparative politics, and then also having a minor in international relations. I always, always wanted to, you know, find out what the foreign service was like in Trinidad and mm -hmm. Tobago. So I applied to do an internship upon graduation. Of course, that raised many eyebrows. A lot of people mm -hmm. felt like I should have pushed my interest in finding a job immediately upon graduation here in the United States. Mm -hmm. um, but because I had several internships exper experiences and that type of thing, I didn't feel the rush to mm -hmm. do that. So my summer, upon graduation, I was in Trinidad and Tobago interning with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and it was an excellent experience. I wouldn't trade it. Um, I think people um, too often feel like the only way that they can contribute is financially. And I don't mm. believe that. The Caribbean has a lot to offer. And this is from outside. This is from outside. And mm -hmm. even when we leave, we have this impression that we, you know, we go to Western Union and MoneyGram, and that's the best that we can do. But the Caribbean has a lot to offer. And by even being in the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, I realized a lot of the skills that I learned today, I probably wouldn't have been exposed to that in the U.S. State Department. Mm. Probably. Mm. I can't say. But when I compare a lot of my experience, my experience there to other friends who probably did internships here at embassies or, mm -hmm. or so forth, it's vast, vast opportunities. Being at protocol and counselor, being able to understand and learn how to write a diplomatic note, these are the kind of things I learned there. Mm -hmm. Which and you probably would not get here, you're right. Exactly, it's because invaluable. Because you've got a much less important role in, in one of, of course, those situations Of course, it would be a rat race, I have to climb up. But right. when I was there, um, we were definitely, you know, it was smaller, smaller departments. You had, you know, one-on-one -on -one time, you could definitely mm -hmm. ask for help, ask for assistance. You learned, you were able to see and mimic how you know you present yourself at different events, how you address an ambassador, his or her excellency. So mm -hmm. these are very valuable things that I don't think I would have gained here. Mm -hmm. So I definitely don't regret going home, right back home immediately upon graduation. I'm back here and I'm working here, which is also great, but my long-term goal is to return to, return. to my country. Master Sion, <laughs> <laughs> the Jamaican. Uh, Jamaicans are known to be very, um, patriotic yes. and committed to their homes. What is your view and what was your plan? So originally when I, I, I came here um, as an undergraduate actually at Georgetown um, and uh, originally, well I was afforded this opportunity because um, of a, I got a track and field scholarship. Mm -hmm. And so when I um, started Georgetown, the idea was to graduate and then go back home. You know. Being home with family, as you're saying, patriotism is a huge aspect of um, Jamaican culture, mm -hmm. and that's definitely one thing that I wanted to keep um, going. However, you know, as I stayed here over the years um, and stayed in the summers to work a little and to do internships, etc., I started to realize that um, there are certain opportunities here that I couldn't necessarily have in Jamaica, right, um, at the time. And for me personally, I thought that it was better for me to stay for, um, after, directly after graduation rather than to go home and try to um, be a part of um, a Jamaica that had changed so much over the four years that I was in college that I thought that I would have been going back home to add to the problem, which was an already saturated market um, for um, employment market rather than um, to go home and add something positive right. to the country. And so um, I believe that before thinking about going home, you kind of have to have that plan and mm -hmm. outlook to mm -hmm. say to yourself that, mm -hmm. you know, how am I going to affect my country That's by, you know, going home? What am I going to do in order to positively impact my country? And so that's one reason I'm still here now. Um, and yeah, so. That goes back to what Ambassador said, yes. and that is you must understand how you can fit, fit in, fit in yes. Yes. what is it that is required and, and whether your philosophy fits what is happening in the island. I remember several years ago I had a discussion with um, Prime Minister PJ Patterson of Jamaica and my concern at, the point, at that point was that we were working with this diaspora and talking about people going home and setting up these programs but I got the feeling that we were having one-way streets going two ways, but yet not connecting. And that mm -hmm. is, we had people who were interested in going back to the Caribbean, not really knowing what they were going to, not understanding mm -hmm. how they would fit in, as mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. And the people back there 
not understanding who was coming or what they were coming to do or why. Mm -hmm. And so there was this animosity about these people with all this education coming to tell us what to do. We've been doing this for so many years and it's always worked. Why do we have to have these people come to tell us what to do? Do you think then that you're, the system of having someone to reach out directly to these people, is that the kind of thing that works where what I was suggesting at the time was that we have an orientation program or something where the people in the Caribbean who might be receiving people with expertise in whatever field mm -hmm. are oriented, are, are given some preparation as to what to expect from these people coming in. And on the other side, somebody here to tell the people who are going, this is what you need to do. You need to be planning what you want this is what the situation is. It may not be, as you said, what, what you left four years ago. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This has changed, that has changed, and therefore you have to tweak your, your expectation a little bit. Mm -hmm. that's, that's exactly what the, the role of the, di the, the ambassador responsible for the diaspora, mm -hmm. that's the role of that ambassador. What our ambassador responsible for the diaspora in St. Lucia, what we have done is she has come out to the, um, mainly in the United States, mm -hmm. and gone to a number of different states. And uh, she has spoken to people in the diaspora, informing them these are about what is available mm. in the country, what you would like to see joint ventures in. And where she has also indicated to them that we would like you to come to the country where you will meet with people. You will meet with a number of business people. You will have small retreats where mm. you can talk to them and see whether there is a, a, a where it can link, mm -hmm. whether you will be able to form a partnership with them. So it's not a, a matter of you'll just come here and say, we're going to just tell you what to do because we've been out there and mm. we know more than you small island people, quote right. unquote. Yeah. We say, now look, we want partners. Mm. You come as a partner and we lay down what we have if it's you know whatever basic resources we mm -hmm. have, and you come with the skill and maybe the res the financial resources, let's see how we how can, we can work partner together. and work together. Mm -hmm. That's 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 basically what is being promoted in okay. St. Lucia in several areas: tourism, manufacturing, agriculture, a number of areas. They could also have other areas we have not even thought of looking at because they've been here and they've been exactly. exposed to a number of areas. So they could come and in a very creative way present it to. The people at home say, look, this is what we can get in terms of linking some of our major industries. So it is something where we're not asking people to come there and pretend they know it all. Come and partner with, with the people in, in St. Lucia. That is what, basically. Deshana, mm -hmm. there will be some people who will say, it's okay to go there for an internship for mm -hmm. a short while. Right. Uh, and it's a great experience, but try living there. Well, what is it like? Uh, can you really fit in? Are you really, have you bought into mm -hmm. the system and what is expected there? And how would you adjust to that? How would you work to adjust to that? Right. Well, I think what people need to remember is, especially those of us that were born there, there's no amnesia as to the fact when you spend four years in the United States that all of a sudden you forget, you forget everything the else. situation that's going on in your country. I think if you do have a plan on returning, you stay current, you stay up to date. There are different mechanisms in which you can use to, you know, assimilate yourself as you return. For mm -hmm. me, an internship kind of seeing the lay of the land, what's going on, going home as often as I can, staying up to date with news, current politics, the economy, knowing the unemployment rate, seeing the benefits of free tertiary education if I want to do my mm. master's, having that option versus paying or getting loans or fighting for a scholarship here. And so spending the rest of your life paying for it. And paying for <laughs> it, exactly. So that, you know, so we really need to, to look at it from a different angle and perspective. Um, I definitely agree with um, both the ambassador and Theon about having a plan mm -hmm. about going back. In no means am I telling anyone, as soon as you graduate, don't look up any of these facts and figures and just go back home. Mm -hmm. That, you know, that will be insane. But, you know, for uh, the government of Trinidad and Tobago, the embassy is an excellent resource. There's a skill certificate that you can do, which kind of basically captures your skills and things that you can use for back home. It's, you know, it's kind of like it's online. It's easy to access. Um, there are different... Um, just like you have to look for a job here online, you can look for a job there, you can have discussions, talk to your friends, talk to your family, compare salaries, compare benefits, mm -hmm. find out the cost of living. The reality is that we can't trap ourselves. We need to be global citizens. We can't yes. trap ourselves there and we exactly. can't trap ourselves here. 
Mm -hmm. Here, the unemployment rate is 6.7 yes. and it yeah. is increasing as of 2003. For mm -hmm. Trinidad and Tobago, I haven't looked at the facts across the Caribbean, but for Trinidad and Tobago, up until the latest fact that I saw, we were at 5.7 and we decreased in the first half of 2013. Um, and that's good for the Caribbean. And that's good. Most of the you Caribbean have to is eat seven and above. Yeah. Seven that's right. and above. That's right. So we are now looking at that and we also can't trap ourselves to the basic professions. Everyone looks at the doctors, the lawyers, the police mm. officers, the accountants. Those are great skill sets. Those are, we need them critically in our countries, but we definitely need to tap into an entrepreneurship spirit. We need to look into business. We need to look at what we learn here during the summers, your internships, even jobs like me, I'm working, and how we can apply that to your respective countries mm -hmm. back home. Um, the brain drain, mm -hmm. there are, I was looking up and uh, reading this article, there are over 20 countries they were talking about the economists being concerned because of the, dra the brain drain. They call it the human capital flight. Of course. Because historically, no, it's just another thing where we're taking away from the poor and we're giving to the rich. So you're taking away technically skilled people and then exactly. moving them here to an, a different country and then they don't want to go back. And they develop this country. And they develop <laughs> here. So you have to look at it in a big, a on bigger a bigger picture. platform and that's why I'm anti-brain drain. I want to see how can I plug myself in back home without mm -hmm. just doing Western Union, if it means opening a business, if it means having continuous conversations. I'm not saying you could, can't go back and you're seeing a totally different country, but you can still go. Take the skills that you learn with the track and field, take it there, start a club. Let me teach you some skills that I learn here, things that the young men in your life probably didn't have access to in Jamaica. True. And even for me, True. these skills I'm learning here that people didn't have access to. And you have so access to resources as we well. We have access to resources, and there are resources there too. Yes. We, can't, we can't, you know, put everything and, and, and put everything in a box, whether here yeah. or there. Um, <laughs> Yeah, he's he's nodding. He's yeah. he's agreeing with you in many ways. <laughs> to some degree. Yeah. But um, she brought up an interesting point, and that is the brain drain. Uh, uh, the Caribbean has suffered from this for a very long time. I, I was listening to a program just today, where um, uh, an entrepreneur said that the difference between people going back to the Caribbean or anywhere from the, Europe versus the United States, is their immigration policies. The immigration policies in Europe indicate or stipulate that once you've done, You're thank you very much, mm -hmm. goodbye. Mm -hmm. The situation in America makes it a lot easier for people to want to stay. And the reason that most, uh, and, and they said that 90% of the higher educated people in Europe are from outside of the EU. Mm. They're from the Caribbean and Africa mm -hmm. and Asia. Mm -hmm. So those people are going back home because they have to. But as they said, the benefit that the Europeans see is that they go back and help their countries work better, better. with Europe. And I want to know, do you think this is something that as a region we need to look at my other question is, um, coming back to you, Theon, <laughs> Jamaica is seen as one of the big uh, marketing areas. Jamaicans seem to know how to market themselves yes. and their country better than anyone else. What ideas would you have for your country in terms of how you can make a difference, whether you go back or not? Each country is different, so let's put it True. out there. Mm -hmm. um, not all countries have the same situation happening, and I mm -hmm. think that a lot of the times um, the, these burdens that are happening in the Caribbean aren't shared across the Caribbean. Each, each country is, for the most part, looking out for to itself and, 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 and their own and Very stuff like true. that. So one of the things that might be, might be five point something percent unemployment in Trinidad, but in Jamaica it's a completely it's different thing. Yeah. So, you know, we have to look at them. We can't look at things in a vacuum, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I think that one of Jamaica's biggest issue has to do with mismanagement of resources, right? Mm -hmm. And the only way that people can want to come back and want to be a part of Jamaica is to have those resources and be able to do something 
with those resources, right? And to feel that they can trust that they're exactly. handled properly. Exactly. Yeah. And a big and another another problem with Jamaica has to do with obviously crime and violence, right? And this stops a lot of businesses that might be multinational corporations, etc., from wanting to come to Jamaica and put their business in Jamaica because of fear of crime and violence reaching their business, etc. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that stops from job creation, that stops from other forms of development that the country might have. And so I think that a lot of Jamaican, Jamaica's issues are systemic mm -hmm. and they need to deal with those specific things first before you can actually hope that people are gonna come back and want to give back to Jamaica. Now, I'm all for coming back and you know, devoting time and effort and energy and all that to Jamaica and making Jamaica a better place because you know the idea is out of many one people mm -hmm. for Jamaica, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, however, we need to be able to say that what we're doing here in the U.S. or any other um, foreign country, mm -hmm. right? We have to be able to have that plan to say this is where we are. This is the idea that we have. How are we going to turn this idea into something fruitful for our countries? Right, and the only way to do that is to have the resource to do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that right now, in the state that Jamaica is in, Jamaica doesn't necessarily have the resources for me to turn my idea into something productive for Jamaica by being in Jamaica. What is your idea? So, the, so the, the, the idea is to have to. Well, you, we want to turn everything into, uh, um, we want to turn Jamaica, to, to have Jamaica to be more developed, mm -hmm. right? And the only way to do that, and as I said before, to have people to want to come back to Jamaica, to want to give back to Jamaica, mm -hmm. the only way to do that is to get rid of things such as the crime and the violence, to be able to market ourselves better, that we're not only a place where people want to come for tourism, mm -hmm. but we want to be a place where people want to come and say, I want to start my business here. I want to live here. Mm -hmm. um, it's not always, you know, one of the things that I always laugh about here is that whenever I talk to people, they always say, oh, you know, Jamaica is, is so cool. It's so great. You know, it's such a great place. I really want to go there. I want to be mm -hmm. back there and stuff like that. You talk to a lot of Jamaicans who know and understand Jamaica. Mm, they don't they're they're not telling right. you that same thing. Yeah. And there's obviously a disconnect there. And mm -hmm. there's a, why, why is it that most Jamaicans want that, um, don't want to, to come back and be a part of Jamaica, while there are other people from other countries that really want to, you know, come and, and say, they don't oh, get yeah, the I want to live picture. in Jamaica, I want to be, they don't actually get the big picture. So the idea is how do we have that marketing tool? How do we turn that idea that, I talk about, that I'm talking about into something fruitful for Jamaica? Mm -hmm. And I think that over here, with the infrastructure, with the resources, etc., a lot of people who even want to go back and give back to their countries are starting here mm -hmm. because they're better able to use those resources, better able to use those infrastructure right. mm -hmm. to do it. And that's why I think that people, that we can get the Caribbean back on track and get the Caribbean to become a better place that people want to come back mm -hmm. is for um, people who are here to not look at it to say, well, I have nothing to do with the Caribbean anymore, but to give back even though they're not living in the country. To find a way to, to find a way to give back, yes. even though they're not to make that contribution, even though they're not doing it, and it's not only monetary, of um, that you can do that. Obviously, as you Ambassador can use resources. said, there are several different ways. Exactly. Now, have you personally, either of you, have you specifically come up with a project, a plan, a move that you specifically can make now in the next five years? I come back to you, Deshana. Um. In essence, yes, one of my colleagues, and he's been here before, Adam Rafu, he's always talking about business and mm -hmm. looking into business. And currently, I am a consultant, so that's what I do here. And I would love to use those same skills back in Trinidad and Tobago, being able to move between private and public sector and be able to help project management um, in project management areas mm -hmm. and, and different cases. I'm here, nonprofit and all of that. I do that here, but I would love to kind of like elevate that I in see. the Caribbean and not even limit myself to Trinidad and Tobago, but throughout the region. The I, 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 I personally don't have anything specific okay. that I'm dealing with right now, um, as I'm dealing with a lot you of other time. things. Yes, <laughs> okay. I, I need a little time to come up and develop stuff. Okay. I do have friends, however, that are dealing with 
a, a project right now. Um, one of my friends, Matthew McNaughton, um, he works for the World Bank currently. But what he's doing is try, trying to create a project where you can get more, uh, more Caribbean countries pulling in the same direction. Ah. So not necessarily mm -hmm. thinking about that's each, that's uh, individual useful. countries and, and only individual needs, but to have... As a region. A yes, region. as a region to think right. about how can we all make the region a better place. Better place. Um, because in one country you might have 5.7% uh, unemployment, yeah. another country might have 11%, etc. I'm going to so. stop you there yes. because <laughs> I want to come back to Ambassador. Um, well, just give us a wrap up in a about a minute and then I do want to talk a little bit about where St. Lucia is in relation to the floods that you suffered at okay. Christmas time. For us, um, for me, I have not personally, I don't have any project per se. What I do is maintain the, the policy of the government which right. is you look at the list. Uh, there's a committee that sets up the list of needs of qualified people. Mm -hmm. What's in each industry? Mm -hmm. And then we, I encourage people to give scholarships in these areas to students with a bond, with a view that when you complete these, we'll try and fit you in to that um, particular mm -hmm. industry which has expressed a need for your skills. I basically, see. so this is what, what we're doing. We also try to do privately, the banks use that list mm -hmm. to see which students they should give funding to, ah. to study. So we have so you've, private you've sector and the public sectors. Exactly, private sector and public sector to make sure that we have, um, we have our people. St. Lucia has uh, the lowest rate of migration, actually, in the yes. Caribbean. Mm -hmm. It's and just 36%. Next, think, yes. yeah. But however, our unemployment is quite high. It's 22%. Mm. So it's quite high. And yeah. that's what we're trying to, to, to work on. So um, you do need partners rather than bodies. Bodies. Yeah. That's exactly. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Okay, in the last minute, just give us an update on what we can do to help St. Lucia as a result of the floods at Christmas? We would Christmas like to time. get as much assistance as possible. Uh, at this point, we are looking for um, financial assistance because we have um, sent, uh, lifted a number of um, supplies, relief supplies to mm -hmm. St. Lucia, and we're looking at helping people rebuild mm -hmm. a number of communities and schools. We like to get supplies for, for the school children. We have schools that have been devastated. We, they, they are no longer in existence. And we're trying to get people to adopt schools and say we'll adopt the school, help them rebuild, mm -hmm. and also help assist the children in getting supplies. Mm -hmm. We also have infrastructural uh, um, rebuilding that we need to take, but this is of a, a longer a long term. term. Right yeah. now, we have temporarily replaced some of our infrastructure, but we need assistance in replacing the long term. Our plea now is to, for people to help us in the long term rather I than the short term. The short term. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, for those in the Caribbean, we urge you to continue to make contributions to uh, the various uh, programs and appeals that are being made across the Caribbean for St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and in the Washington metropolitan area, Florida, New York, go to your